sometimes. Um, more likely you'll see the headlines online. But anyways, talking about the medical clinics giving these colorful kits that have Tylenol, a decongestant, cough syrup, lozenges, powdered chicken soup, which sounds absolutely disgusting, um, and a tea bag that they give those to patients with cold sy symptoms. At five other clinics, they were not given those kits. Um, so what are the treatments? The kits, okay? Um, the kits are the treatments, either getting the kit or not getting the kit. What is the response variable? If they fill the prescription, okay, the response variable is filling the prescription. Uh, and I, is that P E R or P R E? P R E. Prescription. All right. So why is this not a well-designed experiment? Does it have random assignment? It has random assignment? Mm mm. It does not have random assignment because these five medical clinics over here gave all the patients the kits. These five clinics over here didn't give all their patients the kits. For it to have true random assignment between those 10 clinics, they should give it to some of the patients and not some of the patients because why would that be an issue with these five over here versus these five over here? What other kind of differences are there huh different environments okay different environments this neighborhood over here could be a completely different group of people versus this neighborhood over here with these clinics okay you got to think about these kind of things when you're looking at these studies um, so no we're missing random assignment I would say that we do have a sufficient a number of subjects okay that's not an issue because uh, by between 10 medical clinics, you've got enough. <clears throat> well, and it involved nearly 11,000 patients. So yeah, that's more than enough. So that's a sufficient number. Um, <clears throat> so random assignment is an X, not a check. I was writing that as I was talking about the other one. Okay. Uh, subjects is a check. <clears throat> and then what's our other one? The control group, comparison group. Do we have that? Yeah, we have that. It's just not randomly assigned. So we do have the control um, group. So we're really just missing the random assignment and I just mentioned how could we improve upon that? Assigning the treatments to the individual patients not to the clinics as a whole. Um, and that's the lurking variable uh, as Jenna mentioned. The environments. This group of this population of people versus this population of people you're talking about some differences <clears throat> that could have effects on whether they uh, fill their prescriptions. Okay, this neighborhood over here, they may not have the money to fulfill, fulfill the prescriptions even if they wanted to um, or something like that. Okay, there are several different things you could talk about with the lurking variables. Okay, so similar idea. Um, we're talking about giving 238 New York City households hand washing soaps, laundry detergents, and kitchen cleaner, cleansers. Half of them selected at random were given antibacterial products. The other half... Um, looked exactly the same, but they did not have the antibacterial uh, ingredient. Are we keeping other treatments? Huh? Are we keeping oh, I, I kind of talked about it. I didn't write it down, but um, I, ta I talked about the different populations of people. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so they asked the participants weekly about the disease in the household. They found no difference in frequency of infectious disease symptoms over an entire year. So do we have our three characteristics? Do we have random assignment? Yes, they straight up told us it was assigned randomly, okay? Um, selected at random. We got that one. <clears throat> do we have a sufficient number? 238, yeah, that's probably sufficient. Uh, and then do we have comparison slash control? Yes, they got the same thing. Um, so we had antibacterial without the antibacterial. Okay, so they're without the antibacterial ingredient was of course the our comparison group. Um, this study was double blind. How did they achieve the double blindness? Okay, so first of all, how was it subject blind? 
right, they didn't know. It was identically packaged. So even if they knew each other and knew that, hey, this other family's in this study too, let me talk to them, uh, <clears throat> their packages looked exactly the same, so they wouldn't be able to tell. How, how could it have been evaluated a lot? Yeah, they, they just didn't tell the evaluators, hey, these people are getting the, this product, these people are getting the other, okay? You just don't tell them, okay? Um, you assign them a number, and the researchers don't know the difference. Okay, let's look at uh, Roman numeral three. That, well, not Roman numeral, but I, I, I. It says, suppose that instead of assigning treatments at random, the researchers simply compare the frequency of infectious disease symptoms over a year in households that use antibacterial products and those that do not. What kind of working variables can you come up with there? Okay, yep, you got some people that are more susceptible to uh, these infectious diseases. Okay, lifestyle, okay, lifestyle. Um, you know, if you don't randomly assign them, you know, you kind of end up with the same issue that we have with medical clinics. You get them to this population of housing over here versus maybe some low-income housing over here. You, you're looking at just issues that exist already um, that don't have anything to do with the products. It's, they would get sick anyways, or, or this group may have better immunity other ways. So, again, kind of the... Um, I would say the existing differences in populations. Now, the last one I really like, because um, it's talking about uh, taking AP versus IB. Now, you may not have heard what IB is. Uh, IB stands for International Baccalaureate. Uh, we don't have any of that around here. I do know that in Winston, uh, Parkland High School is an IB school. Uh, it's just like a, a course of study that students take through high school, and they have a different set of tests that they have to take along the way. They have a lot more uh, of tests at the end of their classes in order to earn this international baccalaureate certification by the time they graduate from high school. It's not as popular as it once was, because AP is growing in popularity. But anyways, um, there's this result that said even students who fail AP examinations in high school are twice as likely to graduate from college in five years as students who never try AP. And we were talking about 78,079 students in Texas. Um, so what are our treatments in this case? Um, I think it's a little too specific. Just taking the AP classes, right? Okay, the actual treatment is who takes it, okay? Um, either taking it or not taking it. What are they trying to measure? Okay. They are trying to measure, do they graduate from college in five years, okay? Do they try to graduate, or do they graduate um, in five years? So how long to graduate college? It's very poor grammar, but I'm trying to fit it in that space. Okay, now, do you think this is really a well-designed experiment? Is it well designed? Let's go through the let's go through the um, uh, qualifications. Number one, random assignment. Do you think there was random assignment? No, you can't go up and say, hey, you're taking AP calculus. You're not. You are. You're not. You are. You can't do that. Okay. Or you can't even like just randomly generate a list and say, okay, this half is, this half not. You can't tell kids which AP classes they are or are not going to take. So. We're missing that one already. Sufficient number. We've got a sufficient number. Um, and technically, there's a comparison control group. You've got the kids that don't take the classes. 
Um, but again, it's a little biased because there's no random assignment. Um, so that's the key there. We're missing random assignment. All right, now, let's see if we can do this. Somebody who has not given me an answer with this before, what kind of lurking variables are there here? John? Going to college for different things. Okay, going to college for different things. That could have something to do with it. Okay, if you're going for, you know, um, there are some engineering programs that you go longer than five years, technically, for your just your undergraduate degree. Um, so that could be a lurking variable. That's one that I didn't think about at all. What could be another lurking variable? Okay, some students just naturally have more drive. And probably those students are the ones that are taking AP uh, classes. Even if they fail them, those are your more motivated students that are probably still going to be successful in college anyway. Um, as opposed to kids that don't care and don't take AP classes. And I'm not saying if you don't take AP classes, you don't care. I'm not saying that. But you you are looking at a difference in drive there. Um, does anybody think that they could come up with an experiment to actually validate these results? Um, I really, I don't know. I can't think of anything. Because, again, there's no way that you can get that random assignment. So... Here's an example of where somebody came up with this experiment and, you know, collected all this data. They, they've got great numbers, and it sounds like it's a great result, but really it, it can't be valid, okay? It really can't be valid um, because you're missing a big, important aspect of um, the well-designed experiment. If you don't have a random assignment, you really cannot validate conclusions like this. Okay, so that's one of the big reasons why I wanted you <coughs> guys to do this is because you, you've got to know what you can and can't believe in the world of statistics. Y'all are bombarded with statistics on a daily basis. Not all of them are valid. Okay, 